Yeah, hey, Lance, I think uh, you were in Chicago for, for both games. Just um, for me personally, I know you did more than just, uh, you know, watch the two basketball games. Like, it's just what was that experience like being able to, you know, be there as a spectator uh, for that weekend? Um, yeah, it was it was great opportunity to, to you know, meet with some boosters and, and, you know, even our fan base just bumping them in the concourse and doing those things. I, again, uh, I, I think all those things are great and a, and a chance to support Coach Self and, and his team. Uh, all those things are, 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 you know, to me, very important and glad we we're able to do it. Is there any way that them going on a run like this can help you on recruiting? I know you've you know, you've, been, oh. you've been on that grind still. Is there any way that can help out? I think so. I, I think today and everything, you know, it's, uh, you know, I guess the, the, the question would be then, well, why hasn't it in the past? But at the same time, you, you still have a brand, you have excellence, you've shown winning and, and, and all those things that top athletes around the country in college basketball come to, to attend school in Lawrence, Kansas. So that component of, the school, the community, and those things fit well. Those should be transferable for us in recruiting, and then we have to do our part as far as the, uh, you know, the football aspects and their fit into the program. But yeah, I, I believe that in then then all things that any of our programs, our success of our women's basketball team is is can help us. Anything that that shows our brand and and the Jayhawks um, doing well, I I think we we can always find ways to to utilize that in recruiting. Hey, Lance, what's just give me one thing about what's happened with ball camp that makes you encouraged about where you got at, right? Spring ball. You're, you're taking away my spring ball again, Jesse. Well, I mean, maybe, maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what okay. month it is, Lance. It's too busy with basketball. Sorry, man. Neither. I'm sorry. <laughs> what one thing from, I ask it again now. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one thing that just one thing that makes you encouraged with spring ball, uh, with where you guys are at right now and, and makes you encouraged about the direction you're headed. Um, watching our defense, I guess, and then I just to kind of what is that playing faster, playing more confident, communicating better. We still have a ways to go in the communication aspect, but I'm seeing them a lot more light years more confident than they were um, last fall. And, and how does that show up in practice? Yeah, like I said, they're playing aggressively with more confidence. We're attacking. Obviously, we, you know, some of, you know, uh, you know, you know, you know, really 60% of the staff, I guess, is is new, but watching it and 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 the things kind of come together is is uh now I always get nervous when when you're watching it is it showing deficiencies in other areas, whether it be offense or defense, if one side's playing playing really well. But I've I'm just watching even early in spring ball, just things that we couldn't, we weren't doing very well of confidently saying things and echoing calls and doing that our guys are doing that now and uh and and we'll continue to build on those things and um you know i'll, I'll say a guy like taiwan berry hill you know the last three four i'm really watching him play faster and, and he's a he's a big good athlete that i you can really see how much he was hesitating in the past so through the reps through the understanding through the weight room everything more confidence is starting to come along these guys as we as we move along. Hey Lance, um, you know, early on you talked about Jalen. How's he looking progressing from his injury or what was slowing him down? You know, he's making progress. He still has done a lot of, you know, very, very limited 11 on 11 reps right now. And that's more precautionary. He's, you know, he's doing all the drills, all the things, throwing Skelly, doing things. So um, again, watching him continue to grow as a leader. His confidence is another guy that continues to feel better about it, taking charge. Uh, he's done an excellent job in the off season as one of our leaders. Um, and again, building building upon that. You talked um, one room that's changed in the off season was the running back room. What do you see from the competition there? Uh, well, and it's good we have depth because it seems like every so often another guy's not quite available. Um, uh, but I really like the depth and the, and the looks of that group. Um, you know, Kai Thomas has really kind of 
you know, feeling more comfortable in this system. You see him, Devin can, you know, has been very consistent, and, you know, you know, working extremely hard. He's got a lot on his plate. Um, Savannah Morrison has shown flashes of, yeah, I really like the way his feet turn over and do some things. He's, he's been slowed a little bit, nothing major. Um, but uh, again, uh, he's, he's shown abilities to make big things happen. Daniel Hyshaw was slowed again for him, but in the little bit, you know, he's going to give us a, a back that, uh, you know, isn't afraid to fight for, you know, run, run someone over for the extra yard, a little bit more of a power guy once he gets, you know, at that second level if we need to. And I, I like that. So I really like the matchup, uh, you know, the mixing and matching of things. And, uh, you know, it's going to be exciting to watch that position. I know you guys have had a couple scrimmages. Anything you've taken from that or some of the head-to-head the -head battles in that? Yeah, I, again, I, I kind of alluded to our defense and stuff. I mean, are you talking holistically, John? Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, our, again, defensively, you know, again, we got to be better against the run and doing things. Uh, very pleased with the job of, of the front four uh, of, you know, what we're doing up front. Um I think they've, they've really adapted to, uh, you know, the two new coaches working with them. I think those guys have done a nice job. So that's been nice. Um, you know, our younger offensive linemen, we, we still in that second unit plus we, we've got a, we, we've got, we're still searching for some consistency there. That's, that's an area of improvement and that, that we've got to get, um, you know, receiver wise, uh, Lawrence Arnold continues to show, that, that he can make some play. Stephen McBride has flashed a little bit. And, uh, you know, uh, Luke Wilson, uh, you know, Tanaka Scott's a young guy that uh, I think at towards the end of August next year, if he keeps to continue to work hard, nice tall receiver who runs well, extremely athletic, I'm looking, looking for him to be able to help our football team. Yeah, and then I, I know you guys have had several guys up for recruiting and everything. Just what have you seen? How's it all been received? And and just what's your perception on meeting with the recruits and everything? Yeah, you know, it's it's early for some. You know, they're they're just getting out to some of these spring practices. But I I think we've been able really appreciate you know those those young men that have come and 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 the people in their program or in their corner for them to to come take a look at us i don't know what it's been like in the past but our numbers have been very solid we we continue to you know ha have multiple visitors not just on a junior day so to speak but other days and uh i think people have taken notice that uh you know things are changing here and 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 there's some good things to to come check out and Obviously, we know we got to continue to work hard at recruiting and, and especially here locally as these guys can come multiple times and we've been able to do different things that they've seen uh, holistically, not just our program, but our university. Hey, Lance, I wanted to build off maybe, it might be a little different than Jesse's question, but kind of at this point in spring practice, has anything surprised you with what you've seen from your guys so far? Surprised me. Um, no, uh, if it's been, I guess, pleasantly surprised is watching guys that are growing and maturing in many ways of what we're asking them to do. Um, as, as I throw out a couple names would be Romello dots in that corner and really trying to do a lot of things and, and, and taking a step out of maybe, you know, things that he wasn't always comfortable and being vocal, uh, uh, OJ Burroughs is another one is, put on about 10 pounds. You know, we've had some guys that are a little bit lighter in the back half of the secondary and we got it. We got to get some things there and they've really embraced what, what sleeve has done in the weight room and, and, uh, and they're getting better all the time. I, I like that. I think holistically we'll have some better depth at that linebacker position um, that we were hoping for with some of the additions and then the growth of the guys that were there. And uh, not only helping us defensively for four quarters, but that'll help us in special teams as well. And you mentioned defense to Jesse's question earlier. Um, how have you seen some of those new transfers kind of integrate themselves uh, in the defense, whether it be, you know, Lonnie Phelps, Gilliard, uh, any one of those guys? 
Yeah, Lonnie, Lonnie's done a really good job. You know, he's got, you know, um, you know, he continues to work hard to learn things, but he has shown the things that we anticipated him having, uh, some good initial quickness. He, he, he's a very good pass rusher, understanding thing. He's just trying to get the, get the feel of all the drills and what the terminology is to be more consistent. But uh, we like what he's bringing to that, to that position, as well as what Malcolm Lee was there and Jeremy Robinson, Hayden Hatcher is coming off injury. So, uh, you know, we've got a lot of guys working there. Uh, Eric Gilliard, again, that's one of those guys that, as I, as I just was talking about those linebackers that kind of fits that profile is that he's going to help that position you know, as he competes for starting time, but he's going to, he's going to rotate. If, if he doesn't start, he's going to be, um, you know, we're looking for that physical linebacker that we definitely within the box. And, and he brings that steps up and takes things on works really hard. Doesn't say much, uh, you know, really enjoy having him in, in, in the program, Craig young, you know, big long body with, with, uh, you know, with, with really great athleticism and speed. And again, he's, I thought he came back off spring break uh, and had some of his best practices and working hard again, starting to feel more comfortable in every day in our program on the field. And uh, can't wait for all these guys to, uh, Kalen Gervin's another one on defense, very steady, very steady in what he does. He's excellent. He can stay down low in his back pedal and things and burst, he can run well, um, you know, with his hips down, um, he's, he's going to help us as well. And looking forward to this last couple, you know, five more practices. And then, you know, the 27 before we play a game, I, I really look, uh, you know, for this group to continue to take big strides. Lance, have you guys considered, I know things are still fluid in the transfer portal every day. Is there any creation about still adding people at this point? Yeah, that, that's a definite possibility, yes. Okay. Um, and then when you look at uh, some of the – I think about this because you talk about some of the fluidity in the trenches and the, on both sides of the line. How many of those positions do you really want to have a pretty good idea of who the guy is going into the fall? Um, I don't know. I've – you know, I think right now on paper you guys would probably see it as well. We have eight seniors listed, I believe. So I'm like eight. I mean, we're still a pretty young football team. And, and so when you say solidify, yeah, you like to have a good idea where it's heading, but I've always believed in the competition factor and, and the fact that nothing will be set in stone, you know, until we, you know, we really break camp. I mean, you want to have an idea that you have, it's not so much who's going to be out there, it's how many. So I guess in the defensive line, you're, you're going to rotate eight to 10 guys in a game, probably four you know, right now where we are at defensive tackle, we could play five to six like we did last year. And then we got to have at least four ends because we're going to rotate there. So that, that that's, you know, that will take care of itself. It's, it, you know, for us offensively, you know, you want to make sure you've got a, a solid five. And then, you know, we're continuing to look at, you know, who's who's like the lineman, whether it be six, seven and eight. Is there going to be an inside guy that can snap? Is there a swing guy that maybe is a guard tackle or a guard center? And where those things are as we go, as we try to build depth to, to get ourselves into a two deep in the offensive line. That's probably what I was referring to. We'll always rotate at tight end and, and, and receiver. And we've talked enough about the backfield. So that's probably the one position. But um, one thing to keep in mind, I guess, guys, is uh, – you know, we, I don't know what spring ball is. Daniel I'll ask you, is this the earliest spring balls ever started here in a long time? Long time. You know, so, okay, you start earlier. That means you lost some weight room time of heavy lifting, part of that thing. And we know that. But now we'll get them back in to start building some of those things as we head into the summer program. And, and I don't want to, I don't want to start saying it's all solidified because some of these younger players that haven't been in college that long still have a high, you know, have a lot of potential to keep getting stronger and gaining, you know, with strength, all of a sudden they become more confident on the field. When they watch more film, the game can also slow down for them. So when they come through these 15 practices, finally in this offense in the spring or defense, we hope to build on that as we work through the summer and of course, through August. 
I wanted to take the chance too to ask you about um, Caleb Sampson. You was, we saw him on yeah. crutches today. What are your yeah. what's your update on him? Yeah, he'll be out for the rest of the spring. Uh, it was a decision that we had. Uh, you know, he's had a kind of a nagging situation, and and we decided to get it uh, taken care of. And uh, you know, Caleb's played a lot of football, and I tell you what, he he's a tough son of a gun, and and he's done everything we've asked, and he never says really a word about it and uh, finds a way through it. But we, we felt for him to have a chance to have a really good summer and uh, make the most of it. So we, we got him as many practices as we could. And then we just decided to shut it down and get it taken care of. Um, and then one other guy we saw sitting out today was, was Morrison. Um, everything going okay with him? He was just on the bike. Yeah, I just, you know, he tweaked something again. And, and again, some of those and. Sometimes, you know, that's that's the tough thing and the balancing thing that we've got to continue to look at. And the players have to understand sometimes taking that week off. And then we've we've done some things coming back, but you can get some minor things out of it. But I don't I don't know if he'll be back for Thursday, but I, I think we'll we'll get we'll get him back out there yet before we wrap this thing up. And if I could just ask one more too, uh, Panagos the other day was talking about how the, the changes in offense have kind of allowed you guys I know you mentioned the move between him and Tywo splitting up the ends and tackles and it was unique for him certainly to do that for the first time in his coaching career but he said the evolutions in the offensive side of the game over the past 10-15 years you're not just running power anymore is, has allowed that to be a necessity um, how much do you think those guys have now appreciate that working with that a couple weeks in and how much do you see that getting to the point where you want it to be with those with that group yeah um, very good question um you know, the one thing part of the coach party to think about that is how the game's evolved, right? You, you see defensive ends standing up at times and they're playing the, you know, the RPOs and things like that. Well, that's a lot different than put your hand in the ground and, mm -hmm. and doing other things. So um, how are you going to drill that? Yet while well, you got all these deep tackles here doing other things. So it allows us to do some other things that way. And I think that's what Jim is alluding to. Um, the other part is, is, you know, a lot of times in practice or, or in meeting time, I should say, is that, you know, um, you only have so much time given in our, in our position meetings. Well, if you're watching only two guys and the coach is talking about it versus four guys, you're only going to get probably half as many plays watched. And that, and as much as, you know, I wasn't going to, you know, I, I really struggled with that during the fall in my own mind, what I was used to, because we did that in Buffalo with two, we split it up. And it really was a thing when we started to turn the corner, um, when we did it, um, when that, when that rule came in in 18. So, um, I, I like it. I think our guys will like it. You know, again, that'll be part of our end of the year evaluation. And we talked to some of those guys right now, the little bit of, just in passing, um, they seem to to um, embrace the change of and both coaches. They feel like they're being coached and getting better and and doing things. That doesn't mean someone else isn't a good coach, but you know they're you know and that's what our guys see that these guys care about them and and as long as progression's made and you can get more things done with those smaller groups, I I hope to continue to see that but that whole defensive line as a whole get better. Hey, Lance, I wanted to ask about special teams. How do they look? Punting, kicking, and I, I know you got to have some depth to do it. Yeah, you know, I, I like the depth of our of, of our specialists and things. Uh, you know, we had hope today. I don't know. It's warm in the office. I don't know how warm it got outside, but we had some faculty members and some boosters at practice, so I wasn't quite ready to send everybody outside today. I probably should have. But we just haven't been outside to really say, oh, wow, you know, and 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 we've always kind of taken more of a special teams approach of, you know, we're going to get it all implemented, do a lot of drill work. There's only in some of the teams, there's only so much you can really do. You're not it's much like the, a lot of ways of practicing these days, John, is you're not going to sit there and cause a bunch of collisions, you know, so it's a lot of fundamentals and understanding and teaching that way. But uh you know, I, again, I, I think our guys have embraced it. Um, the way we're breaking up and having a different lead coach, I, I think is 
I've, again, something that we have done in the past and didn't do last year. I thought we, we did a very solid job in special teams last year. But I think, especially being a morning practice team, I think it's good sometimes to hear different voices to start the day as well. And uh, I, I, I like where that, uh, that, that'll that take us to. Lance, you mentioned how many spring practices were left, uh, I guess, until the spring game. Like, Do you have a main goal you want to accomplish with that spring game? Is it more interacting with the community, having that chance to build that relationship further? Is it on the field? Like, where is that with you? Yeah, you got to try to uh, do a lot of them. You, you, you're trying to do both, honestly. Um, I mean, we want to try to make it a good day to come out and see our guys and know that. But you talk to a lot of coaches these days. Um, you need every practice like we need every practice right now, as we said, for our first spring ball. So it'll be a combination practice scrimmage type setting with with game like situations, of course. But um, we still got to continue to do that. So there has to be a day of development. Um, you know, we've toyed around with things in the past where um, you know, we actually practiced another day after the spring game to kind of clean some things up and really go back to the teaching mode. We're not quite there yet this year on this, but I, I think, um, you know, we have to take advantage of the day. Now, one, one, one way to challenge our guys with this is, okay, now there's fans, there's distractions, there's other things with focus, okay? It's not going to be a huge crowd, but it'll be a crowd. So how do you perform in front of people? Where's your focus? How do you, how do you go about your way? So all those things are things that we continue to work with with our guys. And we'll talk about it as we approach April 9th.